Hello everyone, welcome to the Cinemilled Garage where we are here with the Cinemilled race car and all of our new vehicle rigging products getting ready to rig this all up so that we could head to the racetrack to do a shoot. And right now I want to talk about the six inch round suction cup. All right guys, so I'm really excited. We have a full lineup of suction cups. And so we got a little small rectangular one. We got a four and a half inch. This is the six inch and we got the 10 inch. So right now I'm gonna go over a couple of cool features of the six inch suction cup. So like all of our suction cups, the base for everything is the suction cup pad. And we use nothing but the best. We use Woods Power Grip, which is the leader in the industry of suction cups. They kind of invented the game. They do all the industrial like glass lifting applications and everything. And so we want to offer the best with our product. And so that's why we're using the Woods Power Grip. And it comes with a hard shell protective pad on the bottom for the suction cup pad. You always want to, if it's not mounted to something, you want to put this straight off. Don't put this on the ground in the dirt. You want to protect this surface so that it can do the best job it can in holding the weight of whatever you're rigging. So um, protect it. And that's why we include the cover with your purchase. We do, we will sell these covers uh, uh, on the side. So in case you lose them, you can buy spares. But yes, so the Woods Power Grip is the base. And um, then what we have here is we have a little riser system here. And the riser has a little hex head at the top so you can tighten it. So if you have to replace it, it makes it replacing it really easily. And we can get the, the, uh, the risers really tight on there. Um, and then we have the upper cheese plate top. So the upper cheese plate top, it shares, this is the same size as the four and a half inch. Um, it is really cool because we built in a couple of really important features. So first of all, you can see it is all cheesed out. Um, it's not a random assortment of holes. Uh, some of them serve certain uh, functions. Um, they are mostly all one inch center to center spaced. Um, what you're going to find is though, you're going to find through holes and threaded holes. You're going to find a quarter 20 and three eighths threaded. So you can thread things into them or you can put a bolt right through them because we have through holes, right? So um, we have both, you know, some suction cups, all they have is little baby pins sticking up. And honestly, that does not give you as many options as you might need on your chute. And so the cheese plate top gives you that option, uh, gives you all the options. And we're actually going to get into a couple of different other things that it does. But before we get into that, you know, once you're all done rigging, you know, you're almost never just using one suction cup, I hope. Uh, you're probably using an assortment of them, triangulating, you're using at least three of them. So once you're done with your rig on the vehicle, what you're going to want to do is you're probably going to want to run a safety strap through it. So because this isn't a positive pressure system, there's no vacuum pump constantly pumping the vacuum out of the pads, which is a really great, there's a couple systems out there in the market. Um, that is one important thing that of course I need to point out. So the way these work is they just go on to whatever you're doing. You pump the air out of them until the red line disappears. So kind of like before, whenever we leave before, right as we roll camera, I make sure someone goes around and gives a couple of pumps. So as long as you always have an eye and you're never seeing that red line. So always keep an eye out, always go around, give it a couple pumps and keep, keep it as, uh, as, as much vacuum as you can in the system, they'll hold hundreds of pounds of weight. And so um, that's a little caution right there. But once you're done rigging everything up, what you're gonna wanna do is you wanna, you wanna run a couple safety straps. So what we did here is we have these uh, strap uh, slots on each corner of the cheese plate. So what a lot of people do is they have these things, uh, some people call them grip loops. I think climbers call them uh, gear loops. And so really simply, you just squeeze them together, slide them through the slot right there, and then do one of these deals. And then now you can hook up 
uh, the end of a ratchet strap gives you an attachment point and you can then attach the end of the ratchet strap to something solid and give it a couple of ratchets and that just gives you a little bit extra margin of safety. Um, the other way you can use these, um, usually I save my, uh, my gear loops uh, for sort of uh, giving me a mounting point on the chassis of the vehicle or whatever I'm mounting to. So the other way to use the safety slot right here, strap slot, is to just take the ratchet strap itself, thread it through right there, and actually run it through to the other side and then across to the other mounting point. And then as you can see here, you can then apply pressure and then it is safety and applying a constant safety pressure to the, to the safety pad or to the vacuum pad. So that's another way to use the uh, strap slots. So yeah, um, so let's get into a couple of the different ways you can actually use this upper cheese plate. So one of the ways is you can take it off, you know, you just un take, unscrew it from the base and you're left with just the upper cheese plate. So you can take this upper cheese plate. If you already have our Mitchell Castle Nut, um, great, you just grab that. If you don't, you're gonna wanna buy that. Um, we have a number of through holes and threaded holes around the perimeter of the Castle Nut of the, the thread actually, that's the threaded collar. And that actually will line up with mounting holes on the cheese plate. So what this gives you is a base so that you can mount this to a Mitchell. So if you can imagine, here is a Mitchell base and then the castle nut will go on the bottom. And then all of a sudden, what you have is a cheese plate that mounts to the Mitchell, which then of course, by using our module speed rail starter, which will bolt to the top right there, um, you can run a six foot piece of speed rail off of a Mitchell base. So why would you want to do this? Really simply, a lot of people these days are using things like uh, isolation arms, like a black arm, or even our cinema milled action arm mounted to a dolly. And so to do that, you need speed rail coming off of the end of the dolly, which is a Mitchell mount. And so you need a, essentially a way to put speed rail on a Mitchell mount. And that's what this does for you. By using the Mitchell threaded uh, castle nut, that we sell and the top of your suction cup. And then of course, if you did opt for the optional modular speed rail starter, you just put that right there, run the pipe up and you're good to go. And so you can use the top of your suction cup to mount speed rail to a Mitchell mount. Um, and then there's one more uh, thing you can do with the upper cheese plate. And that is, if you're not familiar, we are now making a pickup truck bed speed rail starter. And so this essentially uh, creates a way for you to start speed rail off each corner of your pickup truck bed. So that is a separate little kit, it's a separate product. But if you already have either the four and a half or the six inch suction cup, which share this upper cheese plate top, we have a really cool feature. So we're gonna be making available essentially a, a conversion kit where you can, it's just the parts you need that mount to your pickup truck. So you can mount this to the corners of your pickup truck and by using the modular speed rail starter attached to the top of it, you'll be able to mount speed rail off of the bed of your pickup truck. And just like with the other one, you're gonna line that up and you're gonna turn it sideways. You're gonna drop it in. Because as you can see here, it's very strong. So you know, and you just take your speed rail and drop it in there. And now you have just transformed your cinnamilled suction cup, either the four inch or the six inch into a pickup truck speed rail starter. So that's really cool. Um, I always try to make our products sort of mix and match and play with each other for that reason. Um, so if you're not using your suction cups to rig stuff, you can use them on a dolly. If you're not using your suction cup, uh, you can mount it to, to, so you can mount speed rail on your pickup truck. So we try to build in as much uh, variety and value into your suction cup purchase. And I would even venture to say you could probably use this cheese plate in a lot of other ways as well for rigging. 
So that is a quick overview of the other things you can do with this upper cheese plate. And you know, once it's all back together, like we have it here, um, if you don't, if you're not using the modular speed rail starter system, um, you can use our grenades that we'll be setting, the grenade uh, starters, um, to start your rigging. And um, you know, you could then take either here we have the uh, swiveling Houdini clamps and start rigging off of there. You can use our rigid Houdini clamps to rig speed rail off of. Um, of course, you can always take the rigid Houdini clamp apart in half and use the female side, which we also sell separately, just this half, because it has a cheese surface, mounting surface on the back. And you can actually take the suction cup and mount the, the half of the Houdini clamp straight onto it and run horizontal tubes off of your suction cup, horizontal speed rail tubes directly off of your suction cup. Or if you use the speed rail starter, you got vertical uh, speed rail tubes going right off of your suction cup. So, you know, we hope we came up with lots of ways that you can use the uh, suction cup system. Uh, either any size you buy, you can use them in a lot of different ways. Once again, you know, why would you use a six inch versus the 10 inch suction cup? And that's because just the shapes on the vehicles, right? And so we're going to have a bunch of different uh, rigging videos. We're going to rig up the race car and we're also going to rig up an SUV down the road. We're going to, I'm always going to be putting out different rigging videos so you guys can have a, a cool view on how to use the, all the different suction cups and the rigging products we make. But basically, it comes down to the shape of the vehicle and you know, the radius of certain bends. So there are times where there's just not enough room for a 10 inch suction cup, which is always my first choice because it's got the most holding power um, and it's the most versatile of them. And there's some situations though, you need smaller suction cups to get in there on the surfaces. So that's why we have a variety of sizes. We got the small rectangular one, we got the four and a half, we got the six inch, and then we got the 10 inch and we might be working on a few others down the road. We're now at the point where we're gonna attach the suction cup to the side of the vehicle. Now, this is just my old beat up race car. You see it's all scratched up. Uh, I'm not so worried about the paint on this car, but if you were, and most of the times you are, because you're not, uh, even if you are using your car, you would care about the paint. One of the things a lot of people do is they use clear cling film. You know, first they clean it off and then they use uh, either cling film or like clear contact paper. There's actually quite a few products that people use um, that are removable, that don't damage the paint and protect the paint. So if you have a classic vehicle, uh, you know, it, this is the kind of thing you're gonna wanna do. In this case, like I said, it's just my beat up race car paint. And so we will, of course, as always, want to clean this off. So, and the reason we do that is once again, because we want to make sure that um, the suction cup has the best possible mirror surface to do its job. So once we got that clean, um, I will always orient the uh, pump with the red line in a position where I can access it and that I can always see. So you wouldn't want to put it down because it's hard to see if the red line is being exposed. And so as always, I press in on it a little bit and I start pumping and now the red line is gone and I give it a couple extra pumps. I already have the clamp a little loose. So I'm gonna grab my speed rail. And you know, as, uh, as you may have heard, uh, Cinemild is selling black anodized speed rail now. Um, you can get it from us. Uh, of course you get your speed rail from any source, um, the, a lot of times, you know, for these, this car mounting, it's not super critical, but you know, for doing, if you're doing the camera car, it's nice to have all blacked out tubes so they don't reflect on anything. And so I'm gonna get this close to where I want it. I'm gonna tighten a little bit on each side so I have an even pressure on the clamp. There we go. Okay. 
Now, you might notice it's moving around some, and as always, you're never just gonna do one, one um, suction cup. You're gonna do a whole series of them and a whole bunch of mounts. So, right off the bat, I mean, you know, if this is fairly strong, you can see the side to side is holding very well, but you can't just rely on one, obviously. So you do have to use as many as possible. Um, and once you'll see when we're finished and we have the whole structure in place, you'll be able to grab this and you know, the whole car will move because the whole thing becomes the structure itself, not just one tube. So of course, as always, we can do our safety straps. Once again, wait till the end to do this, but as you can see here, you can choose where, you know, it depends on which direction you're gonna strap to. On this vehicle, I, we, we're gonna have some strap points on the bottom. And so there you go. And we'll be able to strap it down to a mounting point on the bottom of the chassis. And of course, we're not just gonna pull in one direction. We're gonna have another one over here, possibly uh, one going in the other direction. So, you know, this is just a final safety. Once again, it's not something we're gonna do at this point, but uh, it is something we're gonna do probably at the end. But, you know, that's pretty much all you have to uh, worry about with these section cups. They're very straightforward. Um, you just wanna keep an eye on the plunger, on the suction pump right here. Um, over time, maybe after lunch or something like this, you air can escape and you could lose suction. So like before every take or whenever you remember to do that, just come over, give it a couple pumps, make sure it's doing the job it's supposed to be doing. I hope you enjoyed that detailed look and got a much better insight in all the different ways you can use our vehicle rigging products. You know, they're all, they all have lots of different ways they interact with each other and different, you know, we try to make them smart and a little bit smarter than all the other things out there. Um, as you can see here, we're fully rigged up and ready to go shoot on the racetrack. You know, part of the reason why I look to come up with better versions of things I'm using is because I'm out there shooting and I cannot wait to get this car out there on the racetrack get our action arm mounted up on the on the cinnamon truck and go chase this down and get some cool footage and you know as you can see here we use the six inch suction cup the four and a half the 10 inch you know both of the houdini uh speed rail clamps and uh you know and we're even working on a lot of other things to completely cover all the bases when it comes to rigging cameras on a vehicle rigging gimbals onto vehicles and you know you name it we got the isolation mount coming out we got the action arm you know so it's not just vehicle rigging we got a couple of really cool mounts on the way as well so you know if you want to see more of course follow or like comment subscribe click on the little bell icon and get notified when we have new videos coming up on our youtube channel um you know absolutely check us out and like us on Facebook. There's a couple of groups that we uh, were participate in and we administer uh, on Facebook. One of them is the Vehicle Rigging and Camera Car Group. And it's a very big group, lots of grips in there. And if you buy some of our products and you start to do your own rig on, 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 your, on your vehicle or on your client's vehicle, you know, take pictures, post on there, share. People give you tips like, oh, you should probably run that extra tube. You should brace it like this. You did a good job, all that sort of stuff. You can search through and see all the different rigs other people are doing. So that Facebook group is really great. And, you know, of course, we got the Cinemilled user group. So if you have specific questions about our products, you know, everybody on there are Cinemilled customers and they can help you out. They've probably encountered the same problem or challenge that you're facing. But yeah, so I'm really excited to get this thing going. And I hope you are too. I hope you're getting ready to, you know, fill your shopping cart full of these clamps and all of our suction cups because as you can see, it takes multiple, you know. You need more, a couple of each at least. And, you know, when it comes to the speed rail clamps, you need quite a few. But, you know, it's, you're gonna buy this once in your career and you're gonna be, you know, this stuff doesn't wear out. 
So you're going to be using these for the next 20, 30 years uh, until you don't want to see cameras in front of you anymore. So, all right, guys, thanks for watching this video and uh, for following us. And I'll see you on set.